Whatever wounds the school had up to that point would be mended by the doctor, Dr. Lawrence Grant. The new principal struck fear into the hearts of students who dared talk during one of his few assemblies. Once, two students managed to flood his office with a garden hose. He saw to it that they were each fined thousands of dollars. He even scared some teachers in his day. Uh, he had very high expectations, was a brilliant man, and uh, I think he got you to want to live up to those, which is a good thing. But he wasn't always entirely kind uh, when you didn't, and, and then that didn't necessarily feel real good. At the same time, Grant may have been the most respected man at bay. He defended teachers against angry parents of the community and possessed a brilliant intellect that could only be contained within his skull by the glasses strapped to his head. Deep down, students loved him. He was the kind of guy you could hit on the arm and he'd hit you right back. True or false, Whitefish Bay High School produced two Harvard astronauts. False. But here are some notable Whitefish Bay alumni. Actress Kristen Johnston, who starred in Third Rock from the Sun and played the role of Ivana Humpelot in Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. Craig Council, Milwaukee Brewer and World Series champion. Crazy Dave. Bernadine Dorn, leader of the 60s anti-war terrorist organization, The Weathermen, was also on the top 10 most wanted list. And Nick Bellore, who will likely go to the NFL just as long as no one jinxes it by saying so in a video. In 1984, student life is forever altered when the drinking age is raised from 18 to 21. So for the past 25 years, not a single drop of alcohol has met the lips of a Whitefish Bay senior. 1991 can be remembered as one of Whitefish Bay's most significant years. The year's theme? Just look at how diverse we are! But the only thing that could possibly outdo the Black History Assembly was the last of the faculty variety shows. Students saw their teachers acting like total fools for the sake of entertainment. The show marked the 22nd and final year as principal for Dr. Grant, who is known for the faculty performances he held once every four years. Grant would be retiring as the school's most loved and feared principal, whose departure would forever change the flavor of the school. But as leaves change color, so can they fall. In the spring of 91, four students were killed in an automobile accident on Berkeley Boulevard during the school lunch hour. The entire school community was painfully reminded of the fragility of life. Memorial services were held and the school became the community center for support. The fall of 92 marked the arrival of Principal Cipher. Cipher was very different from Grant, spending more time in his office and less time up in Yo Grill. He kept to himself and some questioned whether his employment ever actually occurred. However, Cipher did want involvement on the parental level, installing parent-teacher conferences. Unlike the Grant days, education became a community effort reflecting national trends. And he came in and wanted to introduce the staff to things like um, retests, regrades, erase grades, give them new grades. Um, kind of a very compassionate, sympathetic thing towards grading, and I don't think the staff was ready for that. At the same time, Cypher did little disciplining. It became the role of the vice principal to put a boot in the student's patoot. The long silence of Cypher ended when Principal Codell ran into the school screaming like a cheerleader. Faculty meetings became pep rallies, but what aroused Codell the most was his personal vision of an internationally conscious high school. He arranged for the installation of two complete sets of international flags. Few shared his vision. Well, one of the senior pranks, all well, the flags disappeared. Couldn't find a single flag. And so eventually they, you know, coughed them up and they said, well, we'll give back the flag in exchange for not hanging them. <laughs> so they didn't. So all the flags were taken away, but when Neil Codell left, uh, nobody's ever found out what's happened to one set of flags. So many assume he took them with him, but uh, of course that's never been proven. Meanwhile, the boys' basketball squad pollinates the tulip of victory by winning state and ending the season with a record of 27 and oh wait! They return for the bloom of 98 to make some more sweet state championship honey. Then, in 1999, Whitefish Bay entered the present, a period which has lasted nine years so far. The ruler of the present is Principal Bill Henkel, the most normal, unoffensive man you'll ever meet. Every day, he sits in the cafeteria, eats his lunch, and can be seen silently cleaning up the trash which has been rudely left behind by a table of sophomores who I hope are watching this. I can be sitting at a conference, a statewide conference, with uh, administrators from around the state and without any sort of prompting if you ask them what's one of the leading school district performing school districts in the state 
almost the first thought that comes to their mind is Whitefish Bay. The future is ultimately inseparable from the past, so I think that having that past and having something that we can base our actions off of and our thoughts off of is something very important. Um, and it's palpable here. It's totally palpable in the school just to see these old pictures out there or the old books in the library. It's, uh, it's very real here in Lake Michigan. And stop! Well, it looks like our 75 seconds are up, but we can continue to honor the past because starting this year, Whitefish Bay will officially be changing its nickname from the Blue Dukes back to the Scrappy Bays. I'm Rylan Twos, and I failed algebra. Good night, everyone. Oh, sorry.